started just a few minutes if you want to grab coffee or water we're just waiting on a few people to come in and there's one of the people they creep up above that well that's like the, the first year i didn't come hey boy well you know julie glenn that's the best to of course with julie glenn and uh Jordan, yeah. wow. she works for uh, working with julie He's, she was supposed to be here, but I don't know who she was. I don't know if I missed her. Time. Everybody yeah. was there. She was supposed to introduce herself. She's going to look good. Just let me know if she can. Yeah. 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 It is. Joe. Yeah. 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 I just, I'm not sure if I have the agenda on this computer account to put up there. I wouldn't worry about it. I And then out of that, she's trying to sit here with her mom. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> All right, good morning, everyone. You guys ready to get going? Okay, I have a microphone up there. I'm not really crazy about using it, so can everybody hear me okay? Last year we had a nightmare with the microphone, so if you can hear us, um, we're just going to go without it. If at any point you can't hear somebody, please raise your hand and we'll knock them upside the head and tell them to speak up. Um, thanks for coming this morning. Uh, it is officially 10.04, if you want to mark the start of the meeting. Uh, we're going to start off uh, with Ron providing uh, the notice and the certification of quorum. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we did provide notice of the meeting. Also, we can certify that we do have a quorum as we had a, over 180 uh, ballots returned. Um, 
move on to the meeting and go on to the approval of minutes. All right. We also have the minutes from the uh, meeting last year, owners meeting last year. I've received no comments or feedback or changes on that, so I submit the uh, minutes uh, as as written. I need a motion from the uh, floor. Okay. Second. Got a second. All right. We got a motion. We got a second. Uh, any questions or comments about the minutes? Okay. Then I call away. Everybody uh, to approve, say aye. 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 I'm not about to count it until I give you that number, so I got it. <laughs> we got it. Okay. All right. Well, thanks again for everybody for coming. How many people uh, were not at the board meeting yesterday? It's probably easier. Okay. We're going to cover some of the things from the board meeting yesterday. We're not going to rehash the whole board meeting. So uh, if there are questions along the way uh, on anything, please feel free to bring those up. Uh, we'll address them as we as we need to. Um, Julie Houston is not here today. Um, is Julie Glenn here? No? Nope. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a couple things before we get started, and then we'll move into financial reports. Uh, I told Julie I'd, I'd, I'd do a real estate update. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the marketing efforts uh, that, that we've done. I also wanted to point out, as for those of you that were at the May board meeting, uh, we introduced Jennifer Wade. She's in the room from American Family. Uh, she's our insurance agent. Just wanted to make sure that, um, that you guys knew she was here. Certainly, if you have any questions, uh, just make sure you have a chance to say hi to her. She's going to stick around all day. Um, as I think everybody's aware, we started, um, I guess, last year, uh, really looking to revamp some of the uh, visibility around uh, our property. Uh, a lot of that was because of the completion of uh, the agreement uh, for the amenity center, uh, the opening of the amenity center, the access to golf, uh, really wanted to, to, to start to bring awareness uh, to the property. So uh, we've done quite a bit of, of, of marketing, of social media marketing, of advertising, uh, really in an effort to, 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 to bring up uh, and expose uh, the property to, you know, to, to, to folks who, who may not be aware of it. Um, our former board member, Ann Dixon, uh, has been working on that for us. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, um, we've got uh, a Facebook page. Uh, we've been posting uh, pretty regularly on it. Uh, it is tied to Tamron Vacation Rentals. Uh, I would encourage you to go out and take a look at that, to like the page. I think we've got 430 people following that today and about 100 and almost 200 on Instagram, which is more than double what we had a year ago. Um, for those of you who may not be as familiar with social media, uh, again, you know, anytime you, uh, you, you like a page uh, or you share that information, it goes to all of your contacts and it just uh, exponentially grows the number of people who, who get some exposure uh, to Tamron. Uh, you know, it's a win-win for us as an association uh, to build up that rental program and, and get more and more people here. Uh, so I would encourage you to, to take a look at that. Another thing that Ann uh, helped me with is uh, I started, I guess, in January, uh, we started doing a newsletter. Everybody got the newsletter, right? Um, we don't mail it. We're email-centric uh, here now. So uh, that uh, newsletter was intended to, uh, to to provide updates on what's going on. We only meet four times a year, so, so to the extent there, and we have a lot of things that are ongoing. To the extent those things are ongoing, we want to be able to provide updates as we can. I hope you find those newsletters helpful. Uh, we use them to um, you know to provide those updates. We advertise the fact that we have the uh, uh, the restaurant space available for lease. Uh, for those of you who weren't in the meeting yesterday, we'd encourage you to, if, if you've got local context, let people know about that space. Um, we've been fortunate that we've been, a, we've been able to monetize that restaurant space to a degree with, um, with some private events. Um, as I joked yesterday, Gary's by far our heavy, heaviest user of that, but we <laughs> certainly have plenty of reason to use that space. Uh, training events, uh, anything we can think of to, to kind of spread the word of, of the availability of that just, you know, obviously helps the uh, uh, the association's bottom line. So we want to continue to get the word on that, out on that. We have been fortunate that uh, we've had a lot of weddings over at Glacier, which has resulted in uh, in rentals for us. Uh, and uh, in some cases, we've had some events tied to those weddings uh, in that restaurant space. So that's that's been very helpful. Um, somebody provide a quick update on the on the uh, uh, sale of properties here. We've had an incredible last two years in the, in, on, the on the sale of properties, and, I, and all I can tell you is, is the, you know, the, the one thing that we have heard again and again, and we met with Ken yesterday on it, 
is the addition of the amenity center has helped this property considerably. We have seen a lot of people come in here and are, you know, who are thinking about making offers. Uh, and when they find out what we negotiated with access to golf, unlimited access to golf, the cost of our access to golf, the amenity center access, uh, literally Julie sends those people to Ken. Ken talks about the amenity center, talks about what a great deal we cut. Ken sends them back to Julie and they come in and make an offer. Uh, that partnership has worked very well. And as the result of that is we're seeing the prices increase here. So far, and this is as of August 12th, uh, Julie was going to send me an update this morning, but I don't think I've seen it yet. But as of, no, I haven't. But as of August 12th, we had uh, 61 sales this year, uh, eight in High Point, 12 in Gamble, eight in Pinecone, 24 in the Lodge. And as of August 12th, there are nine under contract. I'm sure some of those have already closed. Uh, average list price across the property is $176,000. Uh, but I think the important number, and, and keep in mind, that's up from 140, well, back in 2012, 114, 107, 2013 with, with the average prices. So we're starting to see that, that escalation go up, and we're going to continue to see that. Julie's working hard to sell the benefits of the amenity center and benefits of the golf access and, and, and uh, you know, turn that into a value add, turn it into an addition to the sales price. And it seems to be working pretty well. Um, price per square foot has gone from a low of 60 in the lodge to 148 today. So we're seeing market increase in, in, in this, uh, the sales prices. Uh, high point average, uh, $257 a square foot. Gamble's 217. Pine cones, 213. Um, and as I said, lodge is 148. Days on market, uh, if any of y'all were here back in, during the, you know, the financial crisis, 2011, 12, 13, we had, we had places on the market for a year. We're down to less than 90 days now. Uh, these offers are coming fast and furious. Uh, we're getting multiple offers on properties. So uh, all of the efforts that we've that we've done here over the last couple of years are starting to show, uh, we're, and, and they're benefiting all of us. So that's you know that's an important um, important addition to add. Um, rentals. I talked about this a little bit at the at the board meeting yesterday. We've got 135 rentals here, short-term rentals and 25 long-terms. Split about 50-50 between Heather. Uh, and other companies as well as uh, uh, individual owners renting on their own using VRBO or other, other means. So I think there's about 35 uh, folks managing uh, their properties on their own. So uh, we continue to, uh, obviously, with these sales, we've seen a lot of folks uh, who aren't renting, but I think over time you'll, you'll, you'll continue to see that come back. As far as, this is an old number. Ken, you told me this yesterday. What's our, we had 246 social membership. Is that the number I had in my head? Yeah, about 200. 250. Okay, so 250 owners here have joined uh, on this on, on the social membership, and a, and a number obviously have full memberships as well. Uh, so we are seeing the value of that amenity center, and people are joining, and people are enjoying uh, enjoying seeing it. We had some dis light discussion yesterday with uh, with Ken about some other ideas, um, charging stations, for example, for electric cars, or something we talked about, uh, dog parks, or something we talked about. Uh, things that maybe we might be able to work uh, collectively with Glacier to try to solve for from a community perspective. Early stage discussions at the board meeting, nothing is, has, has been hammered out, but um, you know, we do want to, to continue to look at opportunities to uh, increase you know, some of the amenities and advantages of being here. Um, let's see, what else do I got? Survey, one other thing that came up yesterday as far as uh, the restaurant space. We do have an owner that inquired on maybe uh, doing a general store. Uh, we will likely send out a survey to see if there's interest in having something like that. We ran some numbers, and I think the average number of occupants here, occupants here per full time is give or take 90, yeah. 95, something like that. Um, so we, did, you know, obviously having uh, a place where somebody can go down and get, you know, aspirin or granola bars or milk or whatever, um, we believe there could be some value in that. We have an owner that, that uh, expressed an interest in possibly uh, helping pull that off for us. Uh, so we're likely going to do a survey around it just to get some feedback from the ownership on, you know, would that be a benefit? What would that look like? Uh, again, we don't know where it would be. We don't know if it'd be in the restaurant space. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of extra space around here, so most of it's taken up. Uh, so we'd have to explore that, but that did come up as well. Okay. Um, we're going to move into the financial reports. They may have questions so far. I'm just that quick overview. 
Okay. Joe, you want to come on up and introduce Tom? Yeah. Uh, Joe Carey, current treasurer of the association. I guess I'm supposed to be sitting over there, but I can see them better from here. Um, I want to. Uh, I did a. I did a very detailed uh, financial report yesterday at the uh, board meeting. So, so if you were here, you uh, you heard that. Tommy Meadows is here with us today. Tommy is our accountant, CPA, and he's going to give an overview financial report. And he's also going to talk about the financial review. In alternating years, we have a third party uh, accounting firm up in Grand Junction that does a review or an audit. Uh, this year for 2018, it's a review. We have co the copies of it are out there on the, uh, on the uh, table where you check in. Uh, it's also posted on the internet on our website, and Tommy's going to say a few words about that as well. Tommy? Thanks, Joe. Uh, Tommy Meadows, CPA, with uh, Elliott Meadows and Associates in Durango. Uh, we are the, uh, the firm that handles the day-to-day -day accounting for uh, Tamron. We do all the paying of the bills and the verifying of the bank statements and making bank deposits and all that, all that jazz on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, what we're going to do today, uh, you, when you take a walk through the mountains, you, you can stop and look at rocks and, and touch the trees and, and climb around on things. Or you could also look at mountains by getting on a jetliner and flying over and seeing the grand contours. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to just see the, the grand contours of Tamron's financial condition. The, the rocks and the sticks were uh, looked at yesterday. So, um, do we have a slide? Just be careful. You ready for those? Yeah, if you want to go ahead and pull up the first slide. One second. Put the slide up there, and you will have to take away the photo of my, my shoulder. All right, so the, the first um, uh, report that we see is an overview of our cash situation. This is, this is our money. Uh, the column on your right is 2018 on August 31st. The column on your left is this August 31st, uh, just a, a few days ago. Uh, in the operating account, we've got a little bit more money than we did this time last year. We're sitting at about $190,000. Uh, uh, the, the rental program has some cash in a bank account that doesn't move very much. It's, it's sitting at the same balance as the previous year. And then we have the account that's used for capital projects. Uh, there have been some capital projects happening, and we'll see some information on that here in just a moment. So you can see that the, the capital account has been spent down somewhat from a year ago. Uh, then we have our, our money that's in permanent reserves. Uh, that's uh, money that accumulates long term uh, for eventual replacements of, of, of assets as, uh, as assets mature and expire. Uh, you can see that a year ago, well, I did the math, a year ago that those uh, reserve accounts totaled about 743000 uh, This year, uh, the same account, the same money, which has been moved a little bit to, to manage the, the, uh, the cash in, in the banks. Uh, but this year, those accounts total about 759, almost 760,000. Uh, so the permanent reserves are up just a little bit. We'll see how we came to those numbers here in a moment. Uh, there's also a little bit of money left in the special assessment account as, as uh, those projects are being completed, and then some various other accounts have a little money in them. So that as of August 31st, a few days ago, uh, we have this year a million and about 81,000 in cash compared to a million 340 a year ago. Uh, there's also a line, if you want to scroll just a tiny bit, there's another line there that says accounts receivable. Uh, accounts receivable is up a little bit this year. There's no obvious trend other than just the, the, the money on the uh, uh, most recent billing is coming in a, a little bit slower. Um, I look back at the last several years, and it's, it's done this a little bit. So it, there's nothing here I don't think to be alarmed about. Um, so that's the, the cash and the accounts re receivable situation. The next slide will be... Uh, our uh, permanent reserve, I mentioned a moment ago that we would see a little bit about how those permanent reserves changed uh, in, in the last 12 months. Uh, uh, the, the first line there that says permanent or prior year carryover is just money that's been contributed to the permanent reserves over the course of many years and continue, continues to sit there that hasn't been spent yet. Uh, this year we uh, have a, a plan to transfer 60000 out of permanent reserves. Uh, to cover the uh, elevator project. Right now, the uh, uh, capital account has covered that project, and, and but that transfer will be made uh, before the end of the year, the 60000 for permanent reserves to cover the elevator project. Uh, we've earned some interest income. Interest is a little bit down from a year ago, but um, rates fluctuate. And then we have a regular transfer from capital to reserves. 
that at this point of the year is on plan at, at uh, 51,000. Uh, leaving us then showing that the permanent reserves have decreased by a little bit uh, compared to the previous. I'm sorry, have increased a little bit. Uh, the, I think we've got our signs backwards on the, uh, the math there. We, we've increased a little bit over what we had budgeted, but that will be taken care of when that permanent reserve transfer is made for the elevator project. Um, here, I, I should clarify, here we're looking at two, the two columns we're looking at here are year-to-date and year-to-date budget, not prior year. All right, the next slide then should be our operating uh, operating account. Um, the revenue's down just a little bit uh, compared to the prior year, uh, the, I'm sorry, compared to the budget. Um, the reason for that, it seems that there was uh, some changes in the phone and internet uh, and TV charges that were not made in, uh, in setting up the budget. <clears throat> and so I think that's actually good news because it means that you're all having to contribute less for your for your phones and your internets and your televisions. So um, other than that, the, the assessments are right on where they are intended to be. Uh, the line for administrative expenses, uh, administrative expenses are down across almost all the categories with the exception of legal fees, which are up somewhat this year due to some issues that have come up. Uh, the line for operations uh, we show to be over budget by about $40,000, but about $68,000 was excess spent on snow removal, which I think if you, if, if you set aside the financials for a moment, consider the grand picture. That's fabulous news. <laughs> so we're really glad to be over budget in snow removal for the year. Uh, but the snow removal budget more than explains the over budget total on operations. But personnel, I think there's been a, a maybe a vacancy in a, in a position, so we're a little under under what we expected to spend so far this year on personnel expenses. And then the utilities, that's seasonal fluctuation. Uh, we expect utilities to be pretty close to budget by year end once the cold months come along and, and the, the, the bills pick up as we're beginning to pay for heating. And so with all that in mind, we're within uh, about 1% of our budget on uh, uh, operations for uh, the first eight months of 2019. Uh, next slide then, Gary, will be the capital account. Uh, this is the money that, that's used to pay for those capital projects. Um, revenues uh, are consistent because it's a planned contribution from assessments into the capital account uh, from month to month. So revenue is right where we expect it to be. Uh, here we see exactly the opposite of what we saw on the permanent reserves. We haven't made that transfer yet for the elevator projects, and so there's some money that's uh, uh, going to be coming into the capital account that hasn't yet from permanent reserves. Uh, the line for capital expenditures uh, right now shows to be underspent. Uh, that will work itself out as the year progresses and the projects are finished and paid for. Um, so everything's really right on track with the capital, uh, capital spending for the year. Uh, even though we show a, uh, uh, that we're underspent so far, uh, that, that won't uh, hold true as, as the year progresses. Uh, next slide then should be the, uh, the rental program performance. Uh, this one is, is, is pretty boring as, uh, in terms of looking at financial uh, expectations. The, the income is a little bit less than expected, the expenses are a little bit less than expected, and overall it's, it's uh, performing right on track, uh, just a, a, a tiny bit off of its budget for the year. And uh, let's see, is that the, that should be the last slide in that set. Um, so that's kind of where we are. I, I say that the airplane view of the financial condition, everything looks to be yeah. in good shape and, and on plan and, and in, in keeping with our budgets and also in comparing with last year. Uh, the other thing that uh, I uh, have to present today is the results of the most recent financial report. As uh, Joe mentioned, that there's a, a firm, a Todd Beckstead PC in Grand Junction that comes in, they come in and look at our books every year. They look at the work that my office has done and the records that, that Tamaran keeps every year. Uh, but uh, in uh, the uh, even years, they do what's called a review. In the odd years, they do what's called an audit. Uh, you may be familiar with the term audit. Uh, this is not like an IRS audit, but rather when a, uh, an, an independent uh, accountant comes in and looks at the books uh, and, and verifies uh, through uh, through testing, they don't verify every transaction all year long, but they do some random sampling, they do some statistical modeling, and some things like that to verify that the books are uh, a fair report of reality. But with an audit, they can uh, make a statement that uh, they are uh, they don't believe there are any material misstatements. A review is slightly less in scope than an audit, and therefore produces a slightly less certain report. Um, the reason that we do it that way, the reason we do a review every other year and an audit every other year is to keep costs down. Uh, an audit is significantly more expensive than a review report. 
but this year's review report is in, and um, here is, uh, I want to just read a little bit, the, the, the result of either an audit or a review is, is, is a nice letter summarizing the findings of the uh, accountant that performs the audit or review. And I just wanted to read a couple paragraphs out of this to give you an idea of the conclusion of the review that's been done this year. And so what uh, Todd uh, Beck said, the CPA from Grand Junction, what Todd has said in his letter uh, about, his, about his work, he says, our responsibility, his meaning his firm, our responsibility is to conduct a review in accordance with statements of standards for accounting and review services uh, from the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Those standards require us to perform procedures to obtain limited assurance. And that phrase is different than what you would see in a full audit, but in a review, the, the, the term that's used is they are to obtain limited assurance as a basis for reporting whether we are aware of any material modifications that should be made to the financial statements for them to be in accordance with accounting principles. But we believe that the results of our procedures provide a reasonable basis for our conclusion. And then the conclusion that he does reach is, based on our review, we are not aware of any material modifications that should be made to the accompanying financial statements in order for them to be in accordance with accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America. And that's what a clean review report sounds like. He's, he's done his work, he's done his statistical analysis and, and selected sampling of accounts and, and different things that he, that he does to produce the report. And based on his report, he believes our, our financial statements do um, uh, reflect our operations without any need for modifications. Uh, any questions on, on either of those items, either our performance uh, in the budget and, or on the uh, review report from the firm in Grand Junction? Any, any questions about any of that? No? Very good. Thank you so much. Good report. Thank you. Joe. Yes. I know we got people online. I just wanted to see how many people are online. And for the folks that are online doing the GoTo meeting, if you have questions, uh, it looks like there's 60. Gary is here and monitoring. So if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them. Okay, um, we're going to cover a couple of the committee reports, some of which was covered yesterday. Um, there's really two primary ones we, uh, we want to go over. Um, for those of you that weren't in the meeting yesterday, I think we brought this up back in, in, in May, if I recall. Uh, we have uh, talked, we had formed uh, what we called a succession committee. And that succession committee uh, was designed to begin forward planning uh, uh, because uh, Dave had given us notice that uh, he is looking to begin to wind down and slow down a bit. So I'm going to let Eric handle that report, and I'll fill in as necessary afterwards. Okay. Good morning. Uh, again, my name is Eric Tibbetts, and uh, I uh, welcome all of you. Uh, good to see a good audience here. Those in the back, if you could raise your hand if you can hear me. Good. Thank you. All right. I'll try and keep the volume up at this level. As Scott just mentioned, uh, a little over a year ago, Dave Dunn uh, approached the board and indicated that he would like to uh, slow down, not leave, but slow down in some of his responsibilities. Uh, those phone calls at 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning are getting a little old, and uh, he's uh, well, looking to uh, continue his association with TACO, but in a somewhat reduced role. Um, so much as we take that as a bittersweet a little bit of news. We uh, we certainly accept Dave and appreciate all that he's done, and now are on a, on a path to uh, to accommodate uh, his reduced responsibilities. We started out by creating a committee, as Scott said, talking about succession, trying to think about how the organization of this association and the, our staff should look over the next 10 or 20 years. Uh, there were three people appointed to that committee: uh, Stacy Lanius, John Niebling, and myself. John was the chair of the committee. We drafted a board, uh, a mission statement, which the board approved. Um, that report was presented to the president about a month ago, um, and it was shared with board members. Uh, based on the feedback from the board, uh, we went ahead and asked Dave to inform his staff, thinking that the most important part of this piece is keeping our staff in place and happy. They need to know before they hear it through the rumor mills. That meeting, Dave took uh, a lot of time, a week actually, to meet individually with each of his employees. Uh, subsequently, the board then had a meeting with Dave and all of the employees to again lay out our path and what our uh, 
thoughts were in terms of moving forward, also to get their feedback in terms of how they might like to see that process conducted. Um, now we're, we are into the implementation uh, phase of that process. Uh, we're following a couple of different paths. Um, our first thought is to find a candidate, and I won't say replace Dave because I'm not sure that can be done, but to, to fill our top leadership position here at the uh, association. Uh, we're also going to interview a couple of HOA management companies. Uh, many owners have uh, had that experience either in their homes uh, away from Tamron. Um, there are some benefits, obviously, with an HOA management company. There are some drawbacks with HOA management companies. What we'll be trying to do is winnow down some candidates from one or both of those options, present those to the board. Scott, you want to add anything? Yeah, so um, to, to be clear, uh, one of the first things that we felt we needed to do, and, and Eric covered this, was was meet with the staff. Um, the Dave's not going anywhere. Uh, he wants to slow down, uh, as Eric alluded to. Uh, Dave has a wealth of knowledge in that noggin of his that uh, we need to keep around here for a while, uh, and he's going to need to be involved in, the, in, in whatever transition we choose. Um, so the goal is to try to identify a person uh, that would, uh, that would, for lack of a better description, mentor uh, with, uh, with Dave and you know, ultimately be able to take over a lot of the responsibilities that Dave has had. Um, as Eric alluded to, Dave's, Dave's a special breed. Dave, Dave has it's been here forever. He knows the ins and outs of this place as well as anybody. He's also the first guy to raise his hand and volunteer to go fix up it himself. Um, that's been great for us. But that isn't necessarily, you know, a, a path we need to have going forward either. A lot of the things that Dave did were because Dave was going to do it because he damn well wanted to see it himself and make sure it got done right. Um, but he also does a lot of vendor management, a lot of subcontractor management. So our thought was, you know, we've got a board here that, um, you know, many of, of which have volunteered for many years. Uh, several of us have full-time jobs now. Uh, there are administrative functions that we have, as volunteers have managed and our thought was, if we're going to move forward, let's at least look at all of our options. Uh, administratively, uh, look for somebody who uh, can take over managing all the staff, uh, even the front desk the front desk staff, for example. Uh, there's uh, some ability to do some overlaying if we, if, if we do it that way. Um, look at uh, uh, the, you know, what systems are out there that can help support this. One of the reasons we wanted to talk to the HOA management companies isn't to turn over the whole association to the HOA. It's to look at that, these companies and say, what do you bring to the table that's different than what we have today? Right now, we're self-managed. We do everything internally. Uh, these association management companies have software that they use to manage uh, the various associations that they do. They have uh, purchasing power. They have access to Home Depot. They have access to better benefits. Uh, they have, and, and, and you know, using or partnering with one of these association management firms might be as, you know, might be more of a uh, an a la carte kind of option. What you know? What services do they provide? Uh, are there things that will provide lift for us or for our management here? Uh, and would it improve the overall uh, you know processes that we have in place today? Uh, we don't know what we don't know because we've always done it the same way. So we wanted to do that exploration that is ongoing. Uh, but in parallel, uh, we will be posting uh, a job. Uh, we'll be doing a job posting on some of the websites out there just to try to see what candidates come up. Now, we've had several owners approach us and several folks approach us and say, hey, I may have some ideas, I may have some candidates. We need to post it and go through that. Even if we bring in an association management company uh, to do part of this, the first thing they're going to do is hire somebody to work with Dave. And to the extent we can find that person, get comfortable with that person, uh, that only helps the process. Uh, we don't want to screw this up. We want to make sure it's the right person. We want to make sure it's somebody that wants to be here. We want to make sure it's somebody that relocates here, uh, somebody that you know wants to you know, get involved and 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 really understand the nuance that is Tamron. This isn't just a typical HOA. Uh, we are a very large association that has a lot of a lot of needs, and we have a lot of moving parts. This isn't um, uh, you know a, a homeowner's association where you're sending out billings and everybody lives in the house all year. We've got renters that come in. We've got guests that come in. We've got long-term renters. We've got owners that, that come part of the year. We've got folks that live here four, five, six months of the year. We've got pe people that live here all year. So all of that creates nuance that 
uh, we need to find the right solution for. Um, so at this stage, that's where we're at. We haven't done the job posting yet. We just had the meeting with the staff, I think, on the 30th. Uh, we didn't want to do a posting and put anything out there in the public domain until uh, that meeting was had. We reassured all the staff that their jobs aren't going anywhere. Uh, we were going to continue to, uh, you know, they run the place for all intents and purposes. They're going to continue to do that. Uh, it's going to take us time to, to kind of fill that, uh, fill that need. And then we'll likely have a transition going on for a year and a half to two years. So just know that that's going on. Uh, you know, you might see some people here, um, you know, some meetings going on if we, as we have these association management company, companies in. We have required all of them to come here, or not all of them, there's two, to come here, meet Dave, uh, tour the property, understand how we do things today, understand how we do accounting, understand how we do billing, understand the, everything uh, so that they can submit a proposal. We have no idea what any of these services cost. So before we can get to a point of making an informed, intelligent decision, we have to have all the cards on the table and understand what we're dealing with. And then we'll figure out how do we, how do we balance uh, the services that, uh, that might be provided. Do we keep it the way it's been with just a new person? You know, as we do that discovery, we'll, uh, we'll start making decisions and uh, start discussing that internally uh, within the board. But you know, the goal, honestly, is to have somebody in place to start helping day before the snow flies. So this is a pretty quick uh, exercise. Uh, we got roughly 60 days to get uh, some candidates in here. It's a it, it's going to be a tight timeline, uh, but uh, you know we, we we're trying to give Dave the relief so that he's not the guy getting the 2 a.m. phone call when the first snowstorm hits. So hopefully um, hopefully we'll be able to get that done. Uh, any questions on that? Yeah. yeah uh, now is Dave going to be on the selection committee? Uh, he'll be interviewing anybody. Yeah, yeah he'll be meeting good. and interviewing with anybody that we talk to. Yeah. Now, you, you said, uh, Scott, you said that he was going to be like, it's going to be like a year and a half process. Now, it, it has Dave uh, implied that he would stay on that long as a, like maybe as a consultant? Yeah, Dave's not going anywhere. Dave, um, Dave. Not as, as a consultant. As a consultant. As an employee. Yeah, no, as an employee. He is going to stay, I, I think, he, he, I think he's turned 65 in about a year and a half, two years. So he's not, he's not in a rush to go anywhere. He just doesn't want to be the guy on call. He wants to start slowing down, spend more time with his family, uh, have, you know, have, a, have a, a different winter life than he's had for what, 15 years now. So, um, and, and we've, we've acknowledged it and we've said, hey, we get it, we understand. Uh, this was going to happen eventually, right? So, um, uh, you know, it, it, I think we need to view it as um, a positive opportunity. It allows us to go back and look at how we've done things historically. Uh, and see what else is out there and see if there's a better way to do things. Any other questions? Yeah, Jerry. Uh, Jerry, Thanks, Scott. I, I know the purpose of this is to talk about uh, replacing David uh, to a large extent, but um, I think it's really important um, that we really fully acknowledge uh, who Dave is and what he has done for Cameron over the years. He's not simply an employee of, of Taco. He's an institution. He's, he has run the entire staff, all the personnel, made decisions about, about them and managed them, which usually re requires at least one person that not a staff to do that. In addition, he's run the entire property. He's managed it. And then what that's meant is that not only has he made sure that everything gets done that needs to get done, to enjoy the property, but he's made himself available virtually 24/7. Scott mentioned getting calls two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. That's not my purpose. That's really the way it has been, and uh, I can't imagine that we're ever going to be able to find somebody to really fill Dave's shoes. And I hope that that all of us can get an opportunity. Personally, thank him uh, for all that he's done for this. Yeah, I agree. Well said. And I think I, I, everybody's aware of this, but um, if anybody is, 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 is you know, a new owner, what Dave did last year during the fire was just hands down second to none. He was the guy up here coordinating while everybody else was evacuated. He was here babysitting and putting out fires. Uh, and without Dave, I don't know what this property might look like today. So, um, you know, he, he is a he is a unique breed. He is a special person. And I can tell you without fail, every discussion we've had is Dave needs to be taken care of. Dave needs to be involved. He's got a job as long as he wants it. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? 
Okay. Um, I want to move really quickly, or not really quickly, but I want to move um, and get a quick update on where we're at uh, TV, Internet, phone. Uh, this came up in the board meeting yesterday. I'll have Joe provide an update here in a second, but I, I just, number one, I want to acknowledge uh, that, you know, thanks to the board and, and Joe's efforts, um, we have great TV now, right? I think everybody uh, is probably a lot happier with the TV we have today than what we had last summer. So that is, that's largely complete. Uh, internet is a work in progress. Uh, we are, what, 70% complete, give or take, I guess, with, uh, with the internet updates. Um, we are 100% focused on getting it all done before the snow flies. So you are going to see service hiccups. You're going to see some issues with phones. Please be patient with that. This is a new system, a different process. We've got 30-year-old phones in half the units. Uh, this is we never intended for to have all of this exactly you know the exact bells and whistles that we had before. Uh, our uh, goal has been to uh, to make sure we can run the business first and foremost. Make sure the front desk operations work. Make sure maintenance can get calls. Make sure all of that uh, works before we get back to the simple things like setting up voicemails and all of that. So please be patient with us. Uh, we will get that done, but the first, uh, you know, the, the, the primary focus now uh, is to get all of the clusters and all of the lodges up, or all of the units up and running. You want to provide a quick update as to where we're at? Sure. So uh, the lodge was fully lit up, phones, internet, business phones, everything, uh, as of July 31st, so it's been up and running for a month. Uh, owners, uh, one owner in, in the lodge reported internet speeds of up to 190 megabits. Incredible. Um, Gamble Oak was next. Gamble Oak was uh, fully lit up as of about a week ago, and uh, a week or so ago, and internet and phones. Pinecone was the light up in Pinecone began just a couple of days ago. There's some, there's a few units on the uh, northwest side of Pinecone that are now seeing the Tamaran Public Network um, in about two weeks. The rest of Pinecone will be fully lit up, and anybody in Pinecone will, Gary will be sending out an email. You'll be able to call Cedar Networks and set up your private networks. Uh, you'll be able to get back to four-digit dialing if you want to call the lodge and things like that. It's been kind of a transition thing. And then High Point will likely be done uh, by, the, uh, by the middle of October. And uh, so... Uh, like, uh, like Scott said, we're trying to get this all done by the snow fly, by the time the snow flies, and uh, we should get there. And, um, any questions? Well, does this mean that we have Wi-Fi access and we can just log on from our computer? With it? You're up in High Point, right? High Point, yeah. Yeah, you don't have it yet. You're still on the old system now, but sometime next month, or maybe later, maybe even later this month. You will be able to open up your laptop, look at your phone, and you'll see a network that says "camera on public." You, Gary will be sending out emails. You'll know when this is happening. Yeah, you can you can see it today if you're in the lodge. Yeah, if you're in the lodge, I'll get at it today. Right. And and uh, once you once that network comes live, Gary will send out an email and let you know that you can give you a phone number and you can call to the networks, and then you can set up a private network with your own password. So you'll you can actually you can use the public one, or you can have your private one. You've got the best of both worlds. Yeah, and I will tell you, I did that this morning. Um, I called Cedar at, I don't know, 8.20, and I was done at 8.23, to get, getting my four units up, up and running on a private. So you, you call them. you got to do it between 8 and 5. They'll ask you for your unit number. They'll ask, ask you for what you know, a password you want to use. Uh, they'll set you up, and they, they told me, hey, you know, you, you, you'll be able to access it in 15 minutes. So, um, otherwise, the public's available, uh, as, as Joe said, uh, in the areas that are already up and running. So, it's, um, it, it, it should be, uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't got it to log into it yet because I left before they activated it, but it didn't take any time at all. They, uh, what they tell us is that it can take up to 24 hours for that private network, network to become active, but like Scott says, 15 minutes, so yeah, it can vary. Half an hour for you, Charlie? Yeah. You had a question, Bob? In, in high point, we have a happy hour every afternoon uh, around 4 o'clock. 
What's that got to do with the internet? <laughs> Is that an invite? <laughs> am, I, am I invited? <laughs> We've had this question in, in other out in other areas. And, yeah, and I I think they have wired it in Gamble Oak, I, and I assume in Pinecone since the guest uh, service center well, is part the, of that building. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think they did install it in Gamble Oak. What they're going to do in High Point, I don't know. Okay. I could try to find out. All right. I can, I can yeah, talk. That, yeah, I can talk to the engineer and try to find out. is going on to an app now and starting to wash the machines and so forth in those service centers. And unless you have Wi-Fi, they won't. Yeah, we'd have to have an upgrade. I don't, we can, well, I guess we do have that. We can certainly look into that. Yeah. Okay. And what about the front desk? When they cut the building down, we can no longer have Wi-Fi in that area. That would change the I get Wi-Fi in the lobby all the time. I get Wi-Fi. People can't just walk in and use their phone. Camera on public is available right there. I'll double check when I'm there. Look for that. Yeah, if it's not, let us know, and we'll make sure it gets If it's correct. not, let us yeah. know, and we'll get that yeah. taken care of. But it should be there. I've used so it there. So somebody comes in and they're checking in. Tell them to look for camera on public. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you when I logged, when I went it's to, to set mine up today, I saw 30 Gamble Oak, Oak units yeah. that you know that were secured. I could have connected to. So the, the open network camera on public. It's the same network, same name as the network throughout the property. So it's not like you have to know one for each area or anything like that. Anything else? All right. We may have been the Gamble Oak in the past. They said I know there's been a lot of transition. There's going to be a small reduction, okay. and that won't take place. That won't take place until the first of the year when we rebudget and redo things. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. All right. No. Any questions? All right. Well, we didn't really. We not any other committee reports we we're going to cover, uh, which means that we will. Unless anybody has any comments, questions, or anything, anything online? Uh, somebody's having trouble hearing clearly. And um, Dave Nisbet agrees. Dave has been in, has been and is terrific. You're here. Dave is, or <laughs> Dave, Dave, Dave John? Dave wrote that. Oh, Dave John. Okay. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. That was 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, but there, there is a request, if anybody from the audience uh, says anything, please speak up, because it's very hard to hear for the people online. Okay. All right. Well, as everybody knows, the big ticket item. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, you want to do golf. I'm sorry. My bad. Okay. Go ahead. Right. Talk about golf. Golf tournament tomorrow, <laughs> 10 o'clock shotgun. I know a lot of you in the room are signed up. I can keep the I can keep the sign up open until about noon today. So if anybody wants to sign up, come see me after the meeting, during the break, whatever. For those of you that are in the room and and uh, and have signed up, after you can pay your entry fee after the meeting. We got the hot dog lunch uh, over in the lodge parking lot, hosted by Sotheby's Real Estate. And uh, in the uh, front desk, the front desk people, and parents, friends, and coworkers are there to take your money, credit card, and pay your fee so you're, you're covered. You don't have to scramble to do that tomorrow morning. Uh, pairings party, everybody who's uh, playing in the golf tournament and everybody else, don't care whether you're golfing or not, you want to come to the pairings party tonight, have a little bite to have a little hors d'oeuvres and some uh, some drinks. Uh, come on, it's at uh, in the restaurant space over in the lodge, 6:30 C. So come and enjoy some food and beverage, and socialize with your, uh, your friends and see who your team's going to be. By the way, this is on call. Get to uh, quick thing. We will be looking for one or two volunteers to drive around with a camera and take some photographs during this. So we can talk about it tonight. We if had, anybody's interested. There was somebody who was, so, yes. somebody, somebody, yes. somebody was talking to me about that. Roseanne, right? Roseanne wants to do it. What's yeah, that? Yeah, um, Rose, Roseanne uh, Williams. Peter, 
Yes. Okay. Peter Bruce. Okay. And so he wants to do it too? Well, they right. the two of them can do it. Fine. So is Scott is Scott Williams here? No, he's not. Neither one of them are here? No. Well, Scott's playing in the tournament, so we'll talk to him tonight at the parents' party and get that set up. Okay? Anything else? All right. Kathy, who's catering tonight? Um, Norton's. It's a different menu though. Norton's out. Yeah. So I did, also, I, I wanted to not acknowledge Kathy. She did a, a great job helping out with the owner's party last night. Uh, we got Norton's cater at there. They're coming back tonight. So thankless gig, but thanks for doing it. Joe is our best friend. Beverage guy. <laughs> Small one. <laughs> All right. So as I said, uh, we're here today, obviously, uh, to, uh, to, to finalize the elections. Um, if you haven't turned in your ballots, uh, you can still do so. Just as a reminder, uh, we have two open board seats. Uh, we have three candidates. Ken Stone is back here, one of our candidates, uh, Ron and Kathy as well. Uh, if you haven't turned in your ballots, um, you know, please make sure to make get them completed. In addition to that, as I, I believe everybody's aware, uh, we are uh, voting on the the, uh, the changes to the governing documents. Um, I know I've brought this up a bunch of times, put it in the newsletter, reminded everybody um, our governing documents do require an owner vote. A government, the changes to the government, the governing documents require an owner vote. Um, Last time we changed it was 2009. 2009 uh, was a, you know 10 years ago. We had done a lot to the property. We had a lot of cleanup to do. Um, the, we've done three main things uh, on this. Number one, clean up a bunch of stuff that's unnecessary. We had pool and spa language. We had language um, around consolidation. We had things that we discovered didn't make any sense from a maintenance perspective. Uh, so we made those changes. Uh, Christina uh, has been keeping a list since 2009 of everything that came up and said, okay, next time we do this, we need to add that. Uh, we, uh, we added language relative to uh, notification to lien holders, uh, which uh, allows us to uh, get approval uh, to be considered an approved condominium for conforming financing, Fannie and Freddie financing. So we added language to that so that we could get uh, financing in place beyond what we've had. If you look at what we sold this year, uh, it was about 25 cash sales and 20, 27 cash sales, 24 loans. The vast majority of those loans, actually probably all of those loans, are likely ARM loans, uh, which have a balloon option uh, with a big down payment. Conforming financing will lower the down payment requirements, obviously gives us um, access uh, to, um, uh, to a, a completely 30-year you know, fixed rate loan, uh, refinance options, things like that for anybody that, that paid cash today. Happen, you know, this timing's great, obviously, because interest rates are down again, and uh, I've heard many prognosticators ex say they expect it to come down another 50 to 75 basis points. So we might have opportunity to, to, to refi if you're looking to do so. Uh, and then lastly, um, we added language relative to the formula for the ass assessment calculations that was added as well. Uh, legal counsel has been advising us that, hey, you really need to have this. It's a requirement of Kiowa, so we did add that as well. So if anybody uh, hasn't turned in their ballots, ballot box is out there. We're going to take uh, what, about a 15 minute break, I guess. At least. It's going to yeah. take a while to count the ballots. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to take a break um, and then we'll come back uh, and then uh, I'll certainly open up the floor if anybody has questions on new business or anything like that. We'll open up the floor for that then. So this is out there. The ballot box is out there if you want to get everything turned in. You probably should call for nominations. Oh, I forgot. Yep, you're right. <laughs> All right. So, are there any open nominations? Anybody wants to nominate somebody to be on the board? If so, uh, raise your hand, submit a name. Anybody interested in being on the board who hasn't previously uh, indicated an interest in doing so? Okay. Thanks for being here, John. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do if you decide to quit coming to these damn meetings. Um, all right, let's take our break. Thanks, everyone. We opened up there. Uh, all right, I just went outside to see, see anybody outside. So, all right, um, thanks everybody for coming back. Oh, you want to come up here and make? I think we're ready. What? Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I write notes. I just never read the damn things. Um, okay, so for everyone's knowledge, we have 378 
uh, potential eligible, not eligible, potential votes. Um, currently, we have 29 people or 29 units whose vote would be considered ineligible for delinquency reason or something like that. Uh, that leaves a, a, a remaining number of 349 uh, potential votes to be counted. 51% um, of that, which is the necessary number to pass the, uh, the, the, uh, the changes that we made to the DCCRs, is 178. So uh, I don't know our total vote count. It was somewhat north of 200, but I'm sure you have that now. Right at 200? Okay. Okay. Hi, thank you for having me today. My name is Michelle Sanyo, and I was here to count the votes and bring that to you all. So Ron and Kathy have um, had the most votes, and of the 200 ballots received, 187 were approved, uh, had approvals, 11 disapprovals, and two of C. So okay. there we go. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to thank everybody for voting. Uh, I know, and I heard this a, a lot of times this year, so I, I, I do want to just make one quick comment. Um, we we tried to get a lot done this year. Uh, some of that's just because I'm a guy that's got a day job, and when I start doing something, I want it to be done. Uh, so uh, we, we pushed the envelope to try to get a, a lot of things knocked out this year. Uh, you know, Some of it was stuff we've already been working on. Water, uh, discussions are ongoing, but the Internet, the TV, everything else, uh, the DCCRs were an important part of cleanup that we needed to get done. So um, just so you understand the process there, uh, Christina will draft, if she hasn't already done so, the revisions, and then we have to go get them recorded uh, so that they're a public record. Um, Kathy, Ron, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Glad you're back on. You're going to have to keep me on task going forward. Thank you. Ken, we're still going to pick on you because you openly volunteered to help out if you didn't get elected. So you still get to you still get to be on committee since you openly volunteered. <laughs> um, at this stage, we the last two items on the on the agenda before we uh, uh, break and, and uh, work our way up for uh, for the lunch. So Sotheby's is doing the lunch. Is Julie Glenn here yet? Did she come? Okay, she's probably up there trying to figure out who's cooking. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go up there after this is done. Um, we talked yesterday about a little bit of unfinished business. There's not a whole lot going on right now other than us trying to finish up uh, the water. I will bring up, since we didn't mention it, as everybody knows, we, um, uh, we passed the no smoking ordinance. We've got a uh, goofy looking green tent up there. That's our smoking area right now. <laughs> but um, from what I understand, the airflow is very good on it. So it's probably uh, working just fine. Uh, I did. We did provide an update yesterday. We've got plans submitted. Uh, the um, uh, construction is going to get started. Hopefully, again, we do try to do a lot before the snow flies. But the idea is to have that building built. Uh, once we have some excavation work done, uh, we're going to have that building built, and hopefully, that'll be done by you know 11 one or something like that. So, um, anything else? I'm sorry. Uh, it's going to look a lot like, what did we model it after, Eric, the building over in Pinecone? The Pinecone mailboxes. Pinecone mailbox buildings over there. So it'll look a lot like that, with, except it'll have more ventilation. Where is that going to go? Right where the goofy green tent is. Just a little bit. Just a little bit <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll be out there on the far end. The access will be off that sidewalk that goes up towards the back. Gotcha. They're not going to take away the parking lot. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Have, have you guys addressed the problem of the EVAP that's coming? I mean, everybody's going to be... I'm sorry, say that again? The, you know, the cigarettes, EVAP? the... Oh, the EVAP. vaping. Oh, vaping. Okay. Yeah. okay. <clears throat> well, I mean, it was included in the policy. Uh, when we wrote the no smoking policy, it was around any smoking, including vaping, okay. was going to be, <laughs> was, was prohibited in... The lodge and limited to the exterior decks uh, in the clusters. So um, it is considered smoking. It's interesting that it's vaping is now getting a lot of negative news out there, which I'm happy to see because I see a lot of um, I don't know. I've got teenage kids, so I am constantly having to, to deal with them on on talking about that kind of stuff. So um, technically, they're supposed to be out there if they're if they're, vape, if they're vaping. Any other anybody want to? 
any old business we need to talk about? Any questions, concerns, anything? Now's a good time to bring it up. Yeah. Okay, now you said we could still pick on Ken. Oh, of course. You can pick on anybody. <laughs> uh, where's, where's Ken? Uh, Ken, hi. Hey, um, yeah, of course. But my name is Bob, first of all. You know, I have when I see Ken all the time. Hi, Bob. I, see you uh, I, I got a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, one, one of the things, uh, as you all know, my wife and I, we go to the recreation center just about every single day. And um, one of the things that uh, we ran into is not having enough uh, chairs out around the pool. Is there is there anything that uh, you guys are going to do about that as far as putting you know, purchasing more chairs for the guests? Or, as I've heard that's been brought up, and I think they are planning on acquiring more chairs. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're kind of, you're kind of at a disadvantage because of things like that too down in the lower area. Uh -huh. because of the fire pits, a lot of right. people in those fire pits yeah. are there. Yeah, because you know we we're sitting around there, and the, the renter, you know, people come in, they rent, they pay the fee that, to use it, and we hear that a lot of them. They say, "Well, why am I paying this fee?" And I have to sit on the grass, you know. Well, we, thought, was, we thought they liked that. <laughs> <laughs> if I sit on the grass, I couldn't get up. So, but in your defense, of course, this is the first full year that it's open, so you know, you really didn't have anything to gauge it by, but I was just wondering if that's something you yeah, could address that. We had a lot of, you know, wands and seating, but some other amenities down there, so we would do something. Anything to the, to the staff, any of you, anyone there, bring to the staff, because they have regular meetings and they bring any concerns or ideas back to a meeting. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Any new business? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Terry. Just thought it might be an idea to split the position to two so that you could get somebody with expertise in one area or the other that didn't necessarily have to be able to. So for those of you online, in case you couldn't hear that, the question was um, acknowledging the difficulty in replacing Dave, uh, would it make sense to maybe bifurcate some roles and, and have two people uh, possibly um, you know, filling those, those roles? Um, jury's still out right now. I mean, admittedly, we're going to have two people because Joe's not, I mean, Dave's not going anywhere. Uh, Dave will be here for at least a year and a half, if not longer. Um, as I said earlier, he's, he's got a job as long as he wants the job. Uh, we, his roles will reduce, salaries will adjust. Um, at this stage, we're still very, very early in the discovery. We really want to uh, see the, the individual or you know, with, with the, the structure that we put in place take over a lot of the administrative duties uh, that we're having to deal with today. Uh, that might include, you know, that might include billing, that might include collection. We don't, we don't know yet. Um, but uh, you know, I do think you'll see. Uh, a balance of uh, that. I think what you'll see is, is an individual that has a, a, a more of an administrative background uh, than the guy that's going to sit down with the ranch and do the work. Uh, we will likely subcontract. Uh, not, you know, we, we do that today, but keep in mind we're still going to have Mark here. We're still going to have the maintenance staff. Uh, we want to make sure that whoever we hire can can give us the lift we need administratively uh, and help you know help with staffing and some other things like that. So. Again, I, I appreciate the question. Jury's just—it's it, too early to tell, but we, we certainly acknowledge that um, as we identify what areas, what gaps we have, or where we think we have room for improvement, we're going to look for this position uh, to, to ultimately fill those, and possibly you know bring in and outsource some of the work to, to, to one of these third-party companies that, that might give us a lift. Any other new business? Nothing? Okay. Um, well, I guess at this point, do we have a, we got anything else we need to do? I'm, I'm going to look at John just because if I don't, I'll, <laughs> I'll get called out afterward. Okay. So do I have a motion to, uh, to yeah, adjourn? Scott. Scott. Yep. Uh, have, oh, I'm sorry. Somebody online. online. Um, one person asked, we are unsure what was said about loans on Tamron condos. 
can buyers now get a conforming loan from any lender? The answer to that question is, um, first and foremost, we have to uh, complete the DCCR revisions and record them. Once recorded, uh, lenders have what, what they call a condo approval process. And that condo approval process requires that they review uh, the condominium ownership, uh, look at the financials, look at the reserve requirements, uh, and then they approve those condos individually, and that's done at a lender level. Uh, Fannie Mae is not just going to stick us on a list that says Tamron's an approved property. Uh, a lender like uh, Cornerstone here locally, uh, who in this, uh, I've been working with Cornerstone on this. They happen to be a Houston-based lender, so I, I know the attorneys they work with, and, and um, uh, they will go through the process uh, of approving us. At the, uh, at the end of the day, what this will do is allow any lender to go through the process of approving us, uh, and we will be able to represent to those lenders that our uh, governing documents now provide the necessary requirements that Fannie and Freddie re uh, uh, require be in the documents as it relates to, to notification provisions. Really, the only changes we made were notifications to the lien holders. In essence, the lien holders have a vested interest in this property. If you have a loan, that lender has a lien against it. If we have a catastrophic event here and we were to make a decision that we weren't going to rebuild half a building and there were mortgages tied to that, we are required to notify the lien holder. So they have a voice and be able to say, yeah, we agree, it's not worth rebuilding. Uh, or you know, they, they have to be able to recover their uh, the money that they've lent. So the changes we made are really notification provisions for those lien holders. And now that those changes have, have been made uh, to allow for that language, uh, any lender that wants to go through the, uh, the exercise of getting the approval uh, will have access to those documents and be able to get that approval. Right now what's been happening is Gary or I, um, mainly Gary, have been filling out individual condo questionnaires every time somebody wants to get financing. And in many cases, uh, that financing does not move forward because they realize that, that this property doesn't fit in the Fannie Freddie box. I will also tell you that FHA just released revised guidelines to loosen their condo policy requirements as well. They just came out a week ago. I know nothing about them. Uh, but preliminarily, uh, we'll have, you know, Fannie Freddie approval abilities probably by the end of the year, if not sooner. Uh, FHA will look at later. Scott, just so there's no confusion, you mentioned Cornerstone in Houston. They are also in Durant. No, they're here. I, I, yeah. yeah, this started with, um, uh, she goes by B, Denise Fingerlin, I think is her name. Uh, she had requested uh, this. She's local loan officer here in town. Uh, it just so happens like that the Cornerstone headquarters is less than a mile from the Stewart headquarters, and I know 40 people there, so it was an easy thing for me to work with them to figure out how to get this done. Uh, anything else online? Sure. Okay. Yeah, Gus. Yeah, so Gus from Bolshevik, again, 788 and others. Uh, I just wanted to say one thing, because in this process, uh, uh, Attitudes may change, but we have found living here that the uh, maintenance folks that then provide specific services when something goes wrong, wrong in our unit, particularly with uh, the lack of availability in terms of time, getting there from outside resources, is incredibly valuable. So I hope that uh, as we proceed through this process, that if anything, we strengthen that. Now, a recession may change that very quickly, hopefully have that. But uh, I just hope that uh, we don't lose that service in the process. Oh, we, we have no intent on, on, uh, on making that go away. And, and it, you're, you're right. There is, uh, we actually were talking about this yesterday. There, there are things we could probably do better. We could track Keep in mind, we're all individual owners, and we, you know, if something goes wrong in your unit, you're going to be held responsible for it. But that doesn't mean we can't find a way to track some of those things and say, hey, did you realize, you know, your your, your water heater is 22 years old? You might want to consider replacing it. Things like that. We don't. I think we have the record, so to speak, but we don't have a monitoring. That's where we, when we start looking at these association management companies, they have software. They have things that they that they use that, that could be tools that improve how we do things today. But I will tell you right now, you know, there, there are a lot of things we can't get done today uh, and local contractors can't because they can't get staff. 
We don't want to get stuck in that conundrum. If we have something go wrong, we want to have somebody on site to can fix it. Any other comments or questions? Anything else online? Um, one thanks to all involved in getting the no smoking policy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Anybody ready for hot dogs? We're ready to go? We need a motion. Need a motion. Okay, we need a motion, obviously, to motion. adjourn. We adjourn. We have a motion. We've got a brick. We've got a second with Eric. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.